this truck is presenting the P7E a tracked mobile toe crusher used for primary applications in quarries. The maximum feed size of this machine is 700 mm and the maximum throughput capacity is 550 tons per hour, depending on the setting of the parameters. It has a heavy duty feed hopper underneath the vibrating grizzly feeder where the fine fraction of the feed material is scalped off, going in crusher bypass or separately stockpiled. The oversized fraction is going to the toe crusher and after crushing it is discharged via the main belt conveyor and stockpiled. The drive of all components is fully electric and is powered by a built-on and drop-off diesel genset. The P7E is moved by tracks and can be built on from transport position to operating position within 15 minutes. The heavy duty feed hopper is made in double shell design where the outer shell consists of uh, profiles made of high uh, tension steel and the outer profiles are going from the beginning to the end in one piece to avoid cracks in the corners. All three hopper walls, the rear hopper wall and the lateral hopper walls are folding hydraulically by built-on hydraulic cylinders and can be assembled and fixed without climbing up to the machine for safety reasons. The fixation is done by the built-on wedge system also hydraulically powered. The feed hopper of the P7E has a feeding width of 3 meter. It has a feeding length on each side of 2.7 meter and a feeding height of 4.3 meter. The side walls and also the rear walls are performed with wear lining 10 millimeter and 20 millimeter in welded design. The vibrating grizzly feeder, which feeds the material into the crusher and is scalping off the fine fraction, has a length of 4.3 meters and a width of 1.2 meters. And the bottom liner is done with a rubber lining of 50 millimeters to reduce the noise when feeding the machine with the excavator. The vibrating grizzly feeder of the P7E has two grizzly sections on the top deck, each 1,100 millimeter long, so totally 2,200 millimeter, and conical openings in the standard from 40 to 90 millimeter. Each section can be exchanged to other openings from the top without going underneath the crusher by these bolts. We also have a bottom deck on the grizzly feeder. The bottom deck either can be blind, as we can see now, then the fine fraction is also going in crusher bypass, or we can have a square mesh opening of 1.45 meter length then the fine fraction can be discharged via an optional stockpile conveyor to the left or right side. The heart of the P7E for sure is the extra heavy duty choke rusher with an opening in width of 1200 mm and in depth of 830 mm. The drive of the choke rusher is performed by an electric motor and rebuilt. The electric motor has 160 kilowatts and gives the full power directly to the Joe Crusher. The Joe Crusher itself has a weight of 28 tons and has a setting range for closed side setting from 75 millimeter to 250 millimeter. The flywheels of the P7E Joe Crushers have a diameter of 1,300 mm 
And for dust suppression, we have here a spraying system powered by an electric motor and water pump. So the setting of the crushing gap is performed by a wedge system powered by two hydraulic cylinders, one on each side. And the throw of the Joe Crusher is 32 millimeters. The Joe Crusher is supported on flexible elastic damping elements and to reduce the transport height, it can be pivoted via this pivoting pin by removing this bracket and then it can be lowered. The drive of the vibrating grizzly feeder is performed by two electric unbalanced motors, each 7.2 kilowatt, and the speed can be regulated by a frequency inverter. According to the crusher filling level, which is controlled via a ultrasonic sensor, the speed can go down or up for maximum constant production capacity. For discharging the crushed material, the B7E has the main belt conveyor, which has an axle distance of 12.3 meter and a width of 1.2 meter. In the feeding zone, we have special damping elements and the rubber belt is a heavy duty rubber belt type KT flex. The drive of the main belt conveyor is performed by two electric gear motors and each of them has 11 kilowatts. The discharge height for stockpiling is 4.3 meter, so 230 tons can be stockpiled in once. To avoid spillage and falling out of rolling material, the main belt conveyor has two guiding chutes over the total length. The diesel genset is powered by a Volvo engine, TAD1351 GE, fixed speed version, EU stage three. And the diesel engine drives an alternator with 330 kVA. For stage five, the Cummins L9 will be built in. So the total engine unit is a drop-off version. It means it can be removed via these lifting lugs and the power can be disconnected by opening the power locks. Then the engine unit can be separated, protected from dust or in case of uh, service an additional uh, rental uh, engine unit can supply power through these power locks to the engine or even a supply from electric energy from the grid is possible. After opening the power locks and the quick release system, the engine unit can be dropped off within a few minutes. B7E is controlled fully electrically and the control is built in a switch cabinet, which is overpressured. The air is filtered first, and then a ventilator gives overpressure to the switch cabinet. The control itself is done from outside via a seven inch uh, screen or via an additional uh, control with push, push buttons. Furthermore, the control of the tracks can be performed via this cable remote control or via this uh, radio remote control. With this radio remote control, also the gap of the crusher can be adjusted and the speed of the feeder can be adjusted. The track drive is proportional, which means from zero to maximum speed, everything is possible. The switch cabinet and all tanks for oil and diesel are supported by rubber blocks 
to avoid vibration on the electronic unit or uh, electric parts. For lubrication, we have a central lab system installed and here we have power plug out to additional machines, for example, an additional scalper or a stockpile conveyor can be powered from here with a maximum of 60 kilowatt. Also the frame, the extra heavy duty frame of the P7E is performed in double shell design and it is made in split parts to allow a total powder coating of the machine. So the whole machine is powder coated. The tracks of the P7E have an axle distance of 4.16 meter and a track width of 500 millimeter. The tracking speed is either 1.1 or 2.2 kilometers per hour stepless. The hydraulic drive of the P7E crawlers is performed by two electric motors, each 30 kilowatt, and each electric motor is driving an axial piston pump. And we have an additional hydraulic pump with an electric motor for folding uh, the conveyors and for folding the hopper. Uh, during normal operation, no hydraulic is in, uh, running uh, only for tracking. These two electric motors are started and for folding, this small electric motor is started to save energy, which means during operation, no hydraulic is running. The P7E has a refueling pump built on to the drop-off engine unit and optionally an additional diesel tank with 450 liters can be mounted here. For a safe access and service to the machine, the P7E has uh, from both sides very wide and safe walking ways. For ease of service on the P7E to the Joe Crusher and to the Grizzly, the whole feeding unit with the hopper can be slid back hydraulically by 600 mm. Also for ease of service to the bottom deck of the scalper, uh, the cassette system can be removed from here uh, very easy and the tube for the fine fraction discharge to the main conveyor can also be removed very easy. It's a rubber tube. For transport of the P7E on semi trailers, it has several certified fixing lugs around the machine and the loading angle is 17 degrees or even more on the other side. The transport dimensions are 3 meters in width, 15.3 meters in length and in the full assembled condition 3.9 meters in height. But it can also be transported uh, in uh, several parts which means we can transport the feeding hopper separately, we can transport the engine unit separately and the chassis. Furthermore the crusher itself can be lowered to reduce the transport height to 3.7 meters. 